Warning, the following video contains camera work that was not checked prior to recording. Due to life being as it is, reshooting the content just wasn't realistic this week. We apologize for any inconvenience or cringing you may experience. Hello. It's been a bit. Didn't do any. I uh, didn't film last week because I needed a break. A lot of me going on with with work and all the craziness that craziness that's been going on. Um, still rioting in the streets. Um, not everywhere, but here in New York, things been crazy. Still, um, all your big Democrat cities. With unrest and just insanity. Today's video, I want to talk about what's going on. But be warned, today's video is more geared towards those who call themselves Christians. So if you are if you don't believe in it, you don't care for it, you can not watch. I encourage you to watch. Hear what I have to say. You can judge it for yourself. But if you call yourself a Christian, I would like you to listen to this. And the idea I want to talk about today is what is really going on. Right now, we have people, again, like I said, they are protesting. And I'm, and I'm even going to separate po protesting from rioting is what is the end game? If you ask yourself right now, as a Christian, what is the end game? What are the protests for? Because on May 26th, when George Floyd was murdered in front of the entire country and the entire country looked at on it and was appalled by this senseless killing where someone in authority whose job was it was to protect and to serve murdered someone people began to protest and this protest in Minneapolis erupted into riots that burned the city and that was then spread like a fire to the rest of the country. It is now, as I filmed this, July 8th. And since George Floyd's murder, we've gone from protesting police brutality to protesting every, uh, or should I say the, the nine uh, killings of our unarmed uh black men and women uh, by police um, both the justified or unjustified and we have then gone into defunding the police um, and now we are in a hate America protest um, pro protesting the flag, protesting July 4th, um, protesting Trump. Uh, what is the end game? Now you have uh, Black Lives Matter um, activists forcibly going to the churches where the churches are open and trying to stop people from worshiping. You now have the the black militia in places pulling people over, white people, and putting guns in their faces. What is the end game? As a Christian, where do you stand? Now, I do not mean, are you a Democrat or a Republican, a liberal or conservative? Those matter in the short term. I'm talking long term. Where do you stand? If you're a Christian, the Bible is very clear. Jesus said you're either for him or against him. You 
can't be one or the other. So I have to ask you, evaluate yourself. Because I'm hearing a lot of things over the last few weeks. I've heard everything from Christians saying that Jesus was just like us with flaws except that he was sinless so the very idea that you would say that is heresy I've heard Christians say that uh, um, the matter of the heart that calling it, that racism being a sin issue matter of the heart isn't enough that you just can't pray it away and yet the Bible says Jesus can change the heart and create a new man in you. So again, those statements, those memes I'm seeing posted by so many people who have openly claimed to be Christians are posting things that directly conflict, contradict the Bible. Now, what we find our nation is caught up in right now is we are in a tumult of emotion. And when you're emotional, it is so easy to do with how you feel. And yet, you're always told this one little branch of wisdom. Right? You've heard this on uh, every teen movie, every uh, romantic comedy, where the heroine is feeling bad and her friends tell her, don't get a haircut when you're upset. Right? We hear that all the time. We also hear, you know, don't make decisions when you're angry. Right? Don't uh, go up against your boss when you're, when, you're, when you're pissed off. Why do we have these little, you know, roots of wisdom? Because when you are in a state of emotion high emotion your vision's clouded to uh, to quote um, a great um, philosopher of our age though no really though it's not our age this happened a long time ago in a galaxy far far away is hate leads to anger and then to the dark side. How is I have to quote Yoda to start making sense to people? And this isn't coming at you to try to bash you in the head. I'm just asking you to think. When you're emotional about something, and what's separate from there is a thing about being passionate. You can be passionate about something. Emotional about something. It can feel really good. It doesn't make it right. And I don't care what aisle you are on politically. I'm asking you the question. Where do you stand? As a Christian. Right? Because if we're sitting there talking about how we feel, what we're passionate about, I can relate, th relate this best to the idea of story. Those of you who don't know, I'm a writer. Um, amongst the other things I do. Um, but when it comes to writing, when you're, when you're creating a craft, and you, when you've worked on something as long as I've been working on my own project for so long, the hardest thing to do is to take criticism from edits. Especially when you're at the final stretch of your manuscript and you're like the you've been working on it for in my case you know 10 years of pa 
passion of rewriting and ripping things apart, and you're putting back things together, you're changing characterization, you're, you're, you're pushing the story forward, and, you're, and you've crafted something that you just, you love it, and you're passionate about it, and someone says, you should change this, and you say, mm. you don't get to tell me what to do. I have poured my soul into this. I feel so good about it. But those who are successful writers will tell you you have to step, take a step back. Anybody who is an artist, you're a painter, you're, you're, you're an illustrator, you can take a step back and look at your work. Right? Because when you're really up close to it, you're like, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Take a step back, you go, hmm, I see what they're saying. I mean, I had to do that with my own passion project of my of my 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 novel I'm working on. Um, worked on rewrites. Well, let's see. Well, I'm with my wife now. Five years. Worked on rewrites for five years. Had her going through it, having her work on it. She didn't like take it back to her. Had to pull things back on it, and then got to the point where I can then pass it on to the next step of editors, and having to get that knife in my heart, of. You need to rework these things. And I'm like, I don't want to rework these things. I like the way it is. But then having to listen to people who have gone past the state of trying to get published to the point where they are published. They have books on the market. They go, they before, before COVID, they've gone to conventions and they have won awards and they teach. So I can go, these people who have been there I can either go, nah, 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 nah. I know what I'm doing because I am passionate about this. And that's me making fun of myself, not you guys. To the point where I have to go, you know what? Mm. I have to let these people correct me, talk to me. Doesn't mean that I have to take everything they say, but I need to listen to what they say. And take a step back from what I've been working on. And there were times during my process where I, I take a step back and go, you know what? No, I like what I did. And this is why I'm doing it. But there have been a lot of times, more than I would like to admit, where I had to take a step back and go, ooh, these seven paragraphs need to be way worked immediately. Ooh, I like it, but I need to rephrase this entire paragraph not just the sub of worlds no i got to rewrite the entire thing still keep my my points in there my, my my voice but i did write that in a passive tense and it does look mediocre and it does come off as 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 amateurish but you have to do those things and so when i ask the question of where do you stand as a Christian, I can't be talking without going to the to the book because that's just me spouting my own feelings and how I feel about things. And as a Christian, your feelings, your opinions don't matter. Because when you are part of the kingdom of, of, of God and you are belong to Christ, you've given up your rights to be in service to the king. Very similar to how those who become Americans give up their loyalties to their country to take on America, the, the, the cloak of America, and then inherit all the benefits thereof. But from the Christian point of view, I want to take you to 2 Corinthians, right? Chapter 11, verse 12 through 15. And this is talking about the devil and how he comes to deceive. It says, and I will, oh, this is Paul. Um, he says, I, I will keep on doing what I'm doing in order to cut the ground from under those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things they boast about. These are the people who came in after Paul trying to, Talk, uh, deceiving with their words about how good about the gospel and how they're the real uh, the real people 
uh, who follow Christ, and that Paul and all the other apostles, um, or anybody else who follows Jesus around him, were fools and weren't worth listening to. Um, For such people are false prophets, deceitful workers masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising, then, if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. And so I ask you, where do you stand? Are you standing on the word of God? Because as a Christian, if you claim to be a if you claim to be a Christian, that's where you should stand. Not on the left, not on the right. You should just be standing on the word of God. Now, if the left or the left or the right align with the word of God, then you may find yourself on one of the other sides. Where do you stand? Because if you stand for Christ, the only lingo that should be coming out of your mouth should be backed by the word. Should be backed with the love of Christ. Which then have to be backed by truth. Now it doesn't mean You have to be, you know, happy pansy about everything. Because sometimes you got to come in firm. Right? I love my son and my daughter. But when my son gets out of hand, sometimes he needs a swat. And sometimes he needs more than one swat. And I do that to correct him. To realign him so that he grows up to be an honorable man. A man of God, but a man who also does not go out of line, who learns to correct himself. And does not need to be corrected by authorities. Will you let God correct you? Because just like my child, he hates being corrected. He wants to cry and scream and something, and most of the time he screams before he's even gotten a punishment. As a Christian, where do you stand? And if you do stand on the word of God, or you claim to, or you desire to, and you find yourself outside of God's will, Are you A, willing to admit that? B, correct yourself. Or C, be uh, be willing to be corrected. 